This is a Perspective Advanced tutorial, the conveyor belt tutorial. In this tutorial, you will need to rig a conveyor belt with a kinematic setup and have it being controlled by an external controller, in this case a TwinCAD PLC. I have here the finished setup and I have a TwinCAD PLC running and I'm going to set this value of the DC motor to 200 degrees per second and then I'm going to write this value and as you can see the package starts moving over the belt. If I then set it to minus 200 it starts moving the other way and if I then set the value to zero you'll see that the package stops moving altogether. Okay so that's what we'll be making. Um, I'm currently in the finished scene which is included with every tutorial so also this one and we're now gonna go and head over to the exercise scene in here you'll find all the models you will need the models for the belt and for the package and also a description on what to do for this tutorial what steps to take and then a further detailed description on each of those components that you will encounter in this tutorial so let's begin with uh, taking a look at which steps we need to take for this tutorial and that is create a kinematics controller then add a belt system to the belt generate a circumference spline with a belt renderer then create a surface spline then generate a loft mesh using those splines with the belt system then add a DC motor to the driver roll and assign its wheel joint to the belt system to have it drive the belt that's the kinematic setup part and then for the logic we need to create a logic simulator then add a DC motor logic component and assign it to the logic simulator and then connect the logic simulator to the TwinCAD project and have TwinCAD control the DC motor. Okay so let's begin with the first step and that's adding a kinematics controller to our scene as always go to standard components and then uh, sorry add kinematics and then kinematics controller and then uh, we drag this in here so it's now parented under the kinematics controller next step is add a belt system to the belt game object so have the belt game object selected go to standard components belt system and then add the physical component and this will add our belt system script to our belt game object a belt system always needs a loft mesh in order to transport objects over the surface of the loft mesh and we will be generating a loft mesh using two splines a circumference spline and a surface spline and that's what we're going to do next we have now added the belt system now let's generate a belt circumference spline with a belt renderer i highly recommend using a belt renderer since uh, it's uh, way easier than doing it by hand but you can uh, create a spline as long as it's this close spline any way you like i'm gonna go ahead and use the belt renderer i'm going to add the belt renderer to the belt game object so i select the belt and then i go to standard components belt system and add the belt renderer this will add the belt script onto our belt game object a belt renderer always needs belt rolls in order to determine the shape of the spline and for this belt, the shape is determined by two uh, components, and that's the driver roll on this side, and that's the passive roll on this side. And these two are going to uh, be our driver, uh, sorry, our belt rolls. So I'm going to add the belt roll script to both of these. Select the driver roll, go to standard components, belt system, and add the belt roll. And I'm going to do the same thing with the passive roll. So go to belt system and then the belt roll. A belt roll script is added onto the game object and if no wheel joint is present it will automatically create one for you. Then we need to set up this wheel joint and I'm going to start with uh, fixing the axes like this so that the plane is aligned with the roll. And I'm going to set this radius to 0 0.06 and that matches perfectly with the width of this belt as you can see here. And then uh, lastly, I'm going to enforce this outside play mode. Let's do the same thing to the other belt roll. Have this set to right and then 0 0.06 and enforce this. Okay, great. So that's the belt rolls set up. Uh, next thing we need to do is, oh, I see here that the position is just a little bit off. This needs to be the same. Otherwise, it won't be compatible because they don't share the same plane. Um, 
Now I need to assign these two belt rolls. So I start dragging in the driver roll and then the passive roll and then age spline is automatically generated as you can see here and it's running along the edge of the belt uh, with the green line being the uh, spline normal. I'm going to rename the generated belt which is a child, child object of this belt object and I'm gonna call this circumference spline. I will then uh, now remove the belt renderer object since we no longer need that one. Okay, now um, uh, the next thing we need to do is create a surface spline. Create a spline by going to utilities, create and then spline and this will add a default spline to your scene. The surface spline always needs to be on the circumference spline and perpendicular to it. So I'm going to align the surface spline to this point on the circumference spline here. I'm going to fold this open and point one, that's where we're going to align to. So let's rename this first to surface spline, surface spline, there we go. And then we're going to align the two. So go to utilities and then alignment tool. And we want to align our surface spline. So that's part A, the mob object to move. And then we want to move it to point one. And that's part B, our destination. We want to align to the pivots. So select those. And we want to align only on position. Now we can also align on rotation, but we don't want that now. And click apply alignment. And you see that it now snaps onto this uh, circumference spline neatly. Now let's uh, bring this point to in so that it now matches the width of the belt. And I'm going to focus on it so I can zoom in a little bit more. So, and let's have it nicely match the belt width like that. Perfect. Okay. Let's parent this under the same uh, parent as the circumference plan, which is the belt object. Let's put it in here. Okay, and that's the splines set up. Great. Now we have uh, created both splines. Now we need to generate a loft mesh with the belt system. In the belt system, which was on the belt game object, here you'll find the loft mesh settings. It asks for a circumference spline and a surface spline. Let's add those in. So the circumference, circumference spline goes in here and then the surface spline in there. And then you'll find a few settings with which you can tweak the generation, uh, the loft mesh generation. Uh, I'm going to set this to 0 0.05. Uh, I have found that this is a good setting for the loft mesh. And then I'm going to click and generate surface. This may take a few seconds depending on your workstation and the loft mesh you are trying to generate. And it now gives an indication of how the loft mesh will look. We have these red dots and those are indications of the splines that are generated. As you can see here, it has generated a few splines describing the loft mesh sh shape. That looks good. So I'm now going to generate my loft mesh. I'm now going to test whether our loft mesh is generated properly. If I go to play mode, I can now see that this box falls through the top of the loft mesh but stays on the bottom which means that the normals are uh, inside out and I need to invert those so I'm going to enable invert surface normals I'm going to generate the loft mesh again and I'm going to go to play mode and I will now see that the box stays on top of the loft mesh so that's uh, set up set up good Okay, so we've generated our loft mesh. The next thing we need to do, and the last thing are for our kinematic setup, is add a DC motor to the driver roll and assign its wheel joint to the belt system. The driver roll uh, is still a belt roll. Uh, we don't need that component anymore, so I'm going to remove this one, but I keep the wheel joint on here. Let's do the same for this one. We no longer need the belt roll script since it's only needed for generating the circumference spline. The driver roll, let's add a DC motor. Select a driver roll and go to standard component, motors, DC motor, and let's add the physical component. It, this adds the DC motor script onto this game object. In the properties, you will find that it already automatically assigned the wheel joint on the same game object to this DC motor. If it cannot find a wheel joint, it will create one automatically. Otherwise, it will assign uh, a detected wheel joint in here uh, automatically for you. 
we can now uh, add the wheel joint to the belt system since the belt system needs a wheel joint to be able to determine its velocity let's drag the wheel joint on the driver roll in here since this is the wheel joint that will be controlled through the of uh, by the dc motor this should now uh, be correctly set up as for our kinematics uh, kinematic setup so i'm going to go to play mode and then go back to our driver roll and then in the dc motor go to the control panel tab i'm going to generate a control panel i can now control this DC motor from my unity scene and let's give it a speed okay and I now see that the gizmo for the belt is turning in the wrong direction as you can see it's it's turning counterclockwise but the belt is going uh, clockwise so I'm going to invert the axis on the belt like this and that will uh, get rid of that problem uh, but for the rest this is set up uh, perfectly so our kinematic setup is now complete. Next thing we need to do is we have to create our logic setup and that is connecting the system to uh, the Twincat PLC. We start with creating a logic simulator. We do this in the same way as we would create a kinematics contro controller. So we have nothing selected but go to logic, add logic simulator and this will add our logic simulator to our scene. Then um, we need to create a DC motor logic component and assign it to the logic simulator. The logic component for the standard components can be found under the same menus as the, logic, the physical components for that standard component. So let's go to motors, DC motor and then add the logic component. This will add the DC motor logic component on a new game object. Let's parent this under the logic simulator in the same way that we parent kinematics under our kinematics controller. And then it asks for a DC motor. This is where we drag in our DC motor, which is on the driver roll, to have it be connected to the uh, pre-logic simulator. Okay, this we uh, so we have a DC motor logic component, and we have assigned it to the logic simulator. Now, the last thing we need to do is connect the logic simulator to the Twincat project and have it control the DC motor. So we need to set up the PLC settings for the DLC motor logic component. We do that by changing this to instance like this and we need to set the instance name rule here to gvls.dcmotor and that's all there is to it to setting up the DC motor logic component and then we need to set up our logic controller itself first we need to set a simulator name and i'm going to set this to uh, tutorials simulator we have to start it in play mode we don't need this one so i'm going to fold it in this adapter target is set to twincat ads we have several available at the moment but we're going to use the twincat then we need to set the xml file path and this is a file path for where our XML file will be generated, which contains all our IO settings. Uh, and I'm gonna call this uh, conveyor belt settings.xml. Then we need to uh, fill in a server name, and I'm gonna call this conveyor belt server. And an IP address. And an IP address is the AMS net ID for your Twincat PLC. If you go to your system tray icons here, right mouse button click uh, the Twincat icon and then about Twincat, you can find your AMS net ID here. I'm going to copy this in, followed by the port using uh, we use for the uh, PLC. 851 is the default, which is uh, the, one, the one we use for the PLC we have set up, um, but uh, you will have to check for your own PLC what this is. Uh, please note that this is my specific IP for my PLC. This is probably something different on your system, so don't copy this one, otherwise it will not work. And then we're going to go ahead and export this policy. Okay, policy export successfully. Great. Then uh, normally we, we would net need to set the projects folder for the PLC, but since we have a PLC project provided, you won't need to export your files to the Twincat project. So we're going to skip this step for now. Uh, 
if I have done things correctly, I can, could now go to play mode and everything should run. So I have no errors. I'm going to set this to the side and then I have my Twincat project here. If I now set this value, the package should start moving on the belt. So let's write this value and we now see that the package starts moving. And that's actually all there is to it, to setting up your uh, Twincat PLC and linking an external controller to perspective. I hope you have learned something from this tutorial and if you would like to do this tutorial yourself you can find the links to the documentation and the downloads to it in the description.